Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to my presentation on distribution of wealth in America. I'm going to explore net worth of individuals in the United States to the utmost detail. And for the most part, almost all of this data comes from the most recent version of the Federal Reserve Board Survey of Consumer Finances. However, I did take some information from the IRS Tax Stats website as well. You can look up both of these things online. They're very easy to find. And my goal here is to get you to look at the facts and come to your own conclusions about how we got into the current situation in which we are. If you want to see my presentation on the current state of the United States economy, I provide that here as well as how we got ourselves into this situation because of the financial collapse. And in this presentation, I did my best to turn thousands of documents into very easy to follow pie charts and graphs. You can see right here in this simple pie chart exactly how wealth or net worth is distributed throughout the United States. And by net worth, I mean all assets minus all liabilities. That's net worth. And you can see in this handy dandy little pie chart here that over 70% of all the net worth of the United States is controlled by the top 10% of the nation. And here I further broke those numbers down. The bottom 25% have average net worths of around $4,600. And then to the utmost extreme, you can see people in the top 400, which is basically all the billionaires in the United States, have a combined assets of over $1.7 trillion. And in my opinion, and the opinion of many others, this Forbes number is drastically below what the real number is. You can see here from 1989 through 2007, the increase of net worth of all individuals within the United States, and this gray bar right here represents the top 10%, while these bars down here are increments of 20 below that. So that you can see here from 1992 through 2007, which is the most recent data that I have, we've seen a dramatic increase in overall net worth of the top 10%. Here I break down those numbers further, showing the precise numbers. So people in the top 10% in 1989 had an average net worth of $710,000, and that has since grown to $1.6 million while those in the bottom 25% went from 2,500 to 4,600, as I previously had stated. And here I further illustrate net worth divisions between the different income groups or the different net worth groups. And you can see just how dramatic the overall net worth of the top 10% is in comparison to the other net worth groups. So how exactly did we get in this situation? Well, I went back as far as 1947, and you can see here demonstrated the difference between income. This number right here represents the top 5% of all income earners in the United States in 1947. And here, you can see that same group controls now 43% of all earned income. This number right here represents 25, so this will be the top 25, and the next bottom 25, and this is the bottom 25. You can see here that overall, incomes haven't really changed that dramatically. So how have we gotten ourselves into the situation where such a small percentage controls such a large percentage of net worth? Taxes. That's what it comes down to. In 1960, the average person in the top 5% is expected to pay nearly 70% of all of their income to the federal government. That number since now has dropped quite dramatically, as I believe you can see here, this red line. And then here's all the other different income groups, and I'm going to get into them as well. And then this would be the top 20%, this line right here. And then I divided everything down into 20s, just like I did before. So as you can see from this chart, the amount that the different net worth groups are actually expected to pay has dramatically fallen. However, what a lot of people don't realize is these groups don't pay anywhere near the 35%, for example, that the top 0.1% is supposed to pay. Top 0.1% pays right around 13% in 2001 and down to just over 11% in 2008. And then you can see also the top 1% is gone from paying around 34% in 1980 to about 23%. The top 5% went from 27 down to around 20. And this is true for all the different income groups. The top 5 to 10% are supposed to pay around 30%. You can see that they pay actually right around 12. The next 10 to 20 25% are paying right around 9 or 10. Top 25 to 50% are paying right around 6.5. And then the bottom 50% are paying right around 2% of their total income to the federal government. So you can see right there that nobody is really paying what they should be paying to the federal government. Now I'll explore net worth divisions using numerous different factors. You can see here on the left the difference between white net worth versus all non-white and Hispanics in the United States. You can see here the division of net worth depending upon where you live in the United States. The wealthiest people living in the West and Northeast, while the poorest living in the Midwest. 
See here, net worth based off of job category. You can see it's much better to be self-employed than it is to be employed by someone else. Over here, you can see net worth based off of job type. If you are employed by someone else, it's best to be in management. Net worth of homeowners versus renters. This is quite dramatic, and this is the reason that many Americans were quite literally crushed during the economic collapse. And then you have net worth based off of education level. So here's at least a little bit of proof that it is worth going to college. And you can see here exactly how the housing collapse affects overall net worth. You can see here in this chart on the left, home equity as a percentage of household net worth in 1999, about 17 and a half. That means that 17 and a half percent of the total net worth that people held was equity that they had in their home. Then in 2007, at the height of the housing peak, this number actually did touch 26%, and then you can see the fall, fall off here. And you can see in the chart on the right side of your screen the average value of homes based off of net worth, and this is in 2008 numbers. Average value of retirement accounts, again, based off of net worth, this representing the top 5%. Average value of car based off of net worth, I threw this in here just for fun. Average value of stocks based off of net worth, and bonds based off of net worth. This chart represents all non-financial assets, and this chart represents all other assets. Then in this chart here, I'm demonstrating average income changes based off of overall net worth, and you can see here, again, top 5%. Average income in 1989 of about 275,000, and that number jumped the whole way up to 400,000. But remember, it wasn't income that caused this. And I was quite amazed just how much debt these individuals also had. I find it quite amazing that the top 5% of individuals in the United States hold over $350,000 in debt. On average, these are all average numbers, these aren't median. You can also see here just a dramatic amount of credit card debt that people hold. And then here, the average owned on home equity loans, which are loans against a person's home. Well, I hope you found that interesting? Leave any questions or comments below and I have a link in the underbar to this full presentation as well as links to numerous other different topics related to the U.S. economy. Till next time.